trade directors. Okay, and, and this meeting is being recorded. Um, and Vicki, you can start with the director's report. Sure. I just want to remind everybody that uh, New York State requires mandates, uh, annual sexual harassment prevention training, and that those things have been emailed to you, that form and the training is embedded in it. And uh, out of 22 of us that need to take this, I've only gotten six back. So this is supposed to be done in October annually. That's our, gotcha. and it doesn't take long and it'll look familiar from last year. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> and if you got my report, the link is in there. If you don't have that, I can give it to you. Just give me a holler. So I just wanted to tell you that the Friday for Kids uh, is um, celebrating December holidays. We've been having a, uh, a great time with that. We made gingerbread houses last week out of graham crackers. They didn't look anything like houses maybe, but <laughs> had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, this week we're gonna make um, snow globes. So we're doing a little bit uh, higher level craft for the holidays. The group started out at three and initially, and now we've gone, we're expecting 10 people this time. So if that's 10 kids and there's, uh, let's say two kids per family, that's, you know, five adults that are also in here, perusing, sitting and reading, maybe in the little library, but uh, also being around, which is great. Um, I finished working in the reading into the classrooms in the school for the fall. Start that up again in the spring. Winter library programming. The next one that's coming up from the New York Historical Society is uh, John Audubon. And that's uh, Wednesday on the 15th, 6 p.m. Nature and American Art. And I listed the rest of the programs when you see my report. At Columbia County Libraries Association, which you know we uh, funnel money from the town uh, from the Columbia County Supervisors and the town of Ghent, some money goes into that, and then we get money from that as well as money that we spend on things all together for the county. And uh, News Bank is the most recent purchase that we use the rest of the monies for this year. The news bank has got a lot of national uh, newspapers and things, but the reason that we got it was so you could read the Times Union and uh, some other one. That's in Register Star. And the Register Star, thank you. And you can read it. You can just open it up and read the paper, uh, which is entirely different than the Gale newspapers that we had, which was a, an article database search. I mean, it, unless you knew what you wanted, it was really awkward to use. If you're doing research, I suppose that's great. But anyways, um, so that uh, we're just having still some technical difficulties, but it will be up and coming soon. Uh, Rowan Devereaux Smith, if any of you guys know him, he has been a volunteer, a kid working here weekly for three years. And he's just graduating and just stopping well, he'll be graduating in June. So he's just stopped uh, volunteering here. So if you see him any place, you might just thank him for all the time that he has put in here and hung in here. Um, and that also means that we're open then for another, uh, another volunteer to staff, help staff the library on Thursday afternoon. Um, looking forward, Mid-Hudson Library System has opened up the summer program uh, report data, and pretty soon they'll be opening up the, in January, I expect to get all the stuff for the annual report. That always takes um, monumental effort. <laughs> Let's hope it's easier this year than last year, or the year before. Um, and uh, besides that, working with Dottie, Dorothy Cummings, and Linda on uh, the web page, which continues to make progress and get closer to being done and ready. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. Um, 
Okay, Christy, I think you're up. You need to unmute yourself uh, and say a few words, and we, then we need to, I think, entertain a motion to approve the budget. So I had sent out the um, the on November 30th. Um, in total, we are looking at um, total revenue of 100 and I can't read the numbers or two. <laughs> it happened. Bear, bear with me one second. 108.432 for 2022 and total expenses of 108.430. So essentially flat from a net net income perspective for 2022. Um, so I did include um, several notes in, in what I had sent out, but eventually this budget was pulled together with, with bits and pieces and pieces and parts from, from many of you that are on this call um, and some back and forth via email exchanges. So um, nothing too incredible in the budget numbers for next year. Um, we do for the first time, we are for the first time including a for an annual appeal, which um, we have done once so far, um, but have never actually included in the budget before. So that's the only new ish um, revenue item that's included for next year. Um, expense perspective is, is pretty ours and what we expect to experience. Um, coming in 2022. I did not get anybody's, I didn't get questions from anybody after I sent this out on the 30th. I'm happy to take questions now, or um, if anybody had anything they, they wanted to bring up about 2022. I have a, I have a question. How do I do this? Uh, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, okay. Uh, this is Susan Smith. I don't know if this is uh, if it's included in your budget or not, but is there an inclusion for painting the exterior of the building next year in 2022? No, there is not currently a budget line for specifically for exterior of the building. Is that included in your budget? That type of thing? Would that we normally have a, be? We have a building and grounds budget um, that includes uh, building and grounds maintenance, but we have not built in a specific budget line for painting of the library next year. Well, I, I just, uh, if I may, may, uh, may just say a few things about that. Um, you know, we all love our library. And, um, you know, as a volunteer there and a, and a resident in North Chatham over the last 10 years, and being at the front desk and welcoming all of our wonderful people into our library. I know how much we all love it. And it hurts me to see it in such disrepair on the exterior. You know, um, since things have changed with the COVID, many of the houses in, in North Chatham have been completely redone, repainted on the outside. The community looks wonderful. The houses look wonderful. But our little library really needs to be painted on the outside. And I'm just wondering if there's any way we can address that need. Uh, I can talk to that a little bit, Susan. Uh, you know, basically you're probably talking about the ramp, which we did have, it was a plan this summer to have volunteers. And we had a volunteer who was going to spearhead uh, a work party to do that it never came to fruition unfortunately and then the it got too cold to work on it the the main building is vinyl siding and aluminum clad there's no painting at all on the main structure so i assume you're talking about the ramp and the steps I, whatever i guess so mark i didn't i didn't realize that but i guess anything that's wood you know that shows that it needs painted whatever that is on the building is right. there not mostly wood? It's mostly the ramp. And the steps and the porch. Uh, mm -hmm. Right, well, I consider the ramp and the steps all one. And that actually goes to our 
our build, we, we had stopped really in earnest working on that because we were going to do that big addition and the ramp will be redundant right. and be removed. But COVID changed that. So right. we are revisiting that and we did have a plan to do it and we'll pick it up again next year, obviously. Well, I just, uh, I think we're at a point now, Mark, you know, it's been peeling for years now. I can't even remember the time when it was painted fresh, you know, and it, it um, I think it's something we really need to work on this year to make the, to make the outside of the building, you know, look really great because it's, it's it's so important to the community and we all love it so much so i don't know um what we need to do to make sure that happens does it need to be included in the budget so susan i think it, something else is i believe in in 2021 we did apply for um, some grant funding to over the cost of uh, revamping the ramp and and updating the ramp um, looks and and ability to be used, we did not get those funds. So when we when we think about a budget for 2022, um, typically before we add new expenses um, that have to go out the door, we try to figure out how to find incoming funding to cover those expenses. Um, it is not. It, just because it's not in the budget per se for 2022 right now, doesn't mean it can't be done next year. We just have to do some additional work to see where we can get funding to cover those costs if it's not gonna be able to be done on a volunteer basis and with donations. So um, we do revisit our financials throughout the year as things like this come up. Um, so it's something we can certainly put at the top of the list, um, but it's not, it's not like it's not been on the list so far. Well, I'd really appreciate it if if we could put it on the list yep. and and really make an effort as a community to uh, update the the exterior appearance of our library um, so that it really reflects how we all love it so much. Yeah. Mark, out of curiosity, the the outside vinyl that's pressure wash. That's what you would do, pressure washing. Yes, we usually do that. It didn't get done this year. It, it does help tremendously to do yeah. that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Christy? I have one, and I apologize for not asking you earlier, Christy, but um, for the appeal letter, is it just um, being cautiously optimistic, putting it in as bringing in 2,500 since it brought in a lot more than that last time? It's in at 10,000. It's just, if you're seeing 2,500, you're just looking at one month. So it's spread, oh. it's spread well, I see what you do. Could between you paste, the month. Paste it out, gotcha, gotcha. Yep. Okay, very good. Thank you, sorry about that. Yeah, no, no problem. Christy, I do have a question on the um, Excel spreadsheet. It's the tab called um, ELIC, column E5. It looks like, if I'm understanding that, um, we got a good amount of money to help with staff hours going towards ELIC. And the <clears throat> remaining money, which was 4826, was divided by 22. We have 219 hours to put towards ELIC programming for 2022 is that how you interpret it yes yep and and those hours are built into flex time for the the overall staff um, in the budget for 2022 okay so um it's anticipated that um vicky and diana their hours would be put towards that Correct, unless we reuse those hours uh, with, a, with a different person, a different okay. additional staff member. Are these hours in addition to their normal work hours? Yes. Okay, so above and beyond the normal work hours. Yes. When they come and help for a program, we pull from this resource. Correct, yep. Great, and how do we, um, 
How is that denoted in the timesheets? Uh, they call out ELIC time specifically as time used okay. in the timesheets. It's one of the categories. And then our bookkeeper knows to take it as flex or is that something that the treasurer does? It's, it, the bookkeeper doesn't have to do anything with it because it's, okay. staff time still just comes through as personnel expense. We don't have, we don't book staff time in a different category. It's all comes through as, as, as staff expense, but the timesheets will show, always have and will show it was X number of hours for ELIC. It was Y number of hours for meetings. It was something else for circulation. Okay. So it's, it's just a separate schedule. Great. I guess I was just wondering how we make sure that, um, you know, ELIC is definitely in need of help. I think we all know that, especially um, over the coming 2022 without a chair at the subcommittee helm, um, that those 219 hours are really applied toward ELIC and that it's clear that it's above and beyond the staffing time. I guess if we find out that staff are not able to um, put in more flex time or put in more hours, we seek resources somewhere else to help with ELIC. Okay, I see a lot of nodding. Mm -hmm. Can I ask about that also? Mm -hmm. I was I was actually going to ask that it seems um, inflated to me because when I'm sitting here, you know, doing ELIC or uh, Diana is or Craig was, that doesn't all get put back into the timesheets in a way that's being reflected here. I mean, um, I understood that it seems like you can only max out the, the publicity part of it at 1200, but um, it's, you know, we spend a lot of time doing ELIC things and it's and not- You have to record, anytime you're doing ELIC things, you have to record that time as ELIC time. That's the only way for us to track that you're doing work for ELIC. Mm -hmm. I think we need to then update our um, time sheets because certainly even with Craig, we were doing, as far as I was concerned, you know, charging half his time to the ELIC program. Uh, but there, there isn't a way to, I think, to record that. So we're gonna have to just accept, do the Excel sheet. And it was all in the office time though, but he didn't do that, okay, so. Right, so if you're, you've got it in the, in the Excel sheet, you've got a column for ELIC time, right? On, on everybody's time sheet. So you can, you should be able to just record the time you're spending on ELIC in the column that says ELIC, like you do for, for your own time. And um, there's not a there's not a category for arts and culture in there. So when I'm sitting here, traditionally, I know these things have changed, and I just think it's you know a, a different way that we need to keep track of it. Traditionally, this was all charged to circulation, but I spend um, you know a lot most of my time doing administrative things right here on the computer. Whether sometimes it's cataloging books and that sort of stuff, but uh, ELIC is a, another big piece of it. And uh, This feels like it needs to be a continued hmm. discussion. I'm not sure there's a resolution here. Just yeah, I agree. It. Yeah. I think that, that we should bring this up at ELIC because there is an understanding that um, staff, of course, will help with program activities. That's part of the responsibility of staff. Mm -hmm. Right. But um, extra work has been done to raise additional monies to help support the ELIC program. So let's bring it up with ELIC as to how, um, you know, we make sure that these extra hours are really allocated towards helping ELIC. And Julie has a question. Yeah, um, and then I see Terry has her hand raised too. So um, in terms of, uh, in terms of, of the arts and culture program. What I have found is I applied to the Arts Council for funding and generally all that that covers are the artist fees. Mm -hmm. um, in the 
kind of grant that you've applied for with ELIC, it's possible to put in. I've put in management, you know, administrative fees, but I've never gotten the funding for that. Uh, so I have always figured that that comes out of the operating budget. And I haven't applied for extra f funds for the arts program for a number of reasons. One is that I know the library has a lot of needs and the arts and culture program is just one of it. And secondly, I don't want to write another grant. I do too much with the, mm -hmm. as it is from my point of view. And then the final thing is that, um, uh, that uh, you know, I try within the committee to do as much as possible so, mm -hmm. that, so that the library does, staff does not have to spend a whole lot of time. Yeah, I, I hate to interrupt, yeah. but I, I think we need to approve the budget, which is what's on the okay. agenda, because this is kind of a thorny issue, which bears more discussion at a later date, I think. So do we have um, a motion to approve the 2022 budget? I will make a motion. Okay. Do we have a second? Do we have a second to that motion? I will second. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, for all in favor of the motion, uh, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Okay. The motion is passed and we have a budget for 2022. And thank you very much, Christy. And thank you for all who brought up some of the issues that related to it. So fundraising committee, yeah, care, uh, Judy. Um, Dottie, you, you know what I'm yeah. afraid we're gonna forget? We didn't approve the minutes from November. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, well, let's go back to those and approve the minutes. Um, if people read the minutes and uh, were there, did you get any corrections, Brandy? I did, I got, um, some edits, minor edits, which were really great. I appreciate that, but um, no content was changed. Okay. So, okay. So, I think the minutes are stand approved as read. Okay. Anybody have an objection to that? Okay. Uh, Can now, I raise a question sure. before we move on to fundraising? But it, it's a segue between finance and fundraising. Um, Sue and Dottie and I had met and then went back to Christy with a couple of questions about the budget before she put it into final. One of the questions we raised was not about the content of the budget, but about process. And that related the question specifically is, you know, there are a number of grants we get, which are um, just general operating expenses. And we realized, hey, we don't know if there are other places we can go, B, who, whether we can get more money from those people, and C, and probably most importantly right now from a procedural perspective, is who's responsible for actually writing the grant requests. We've got the Evelyn Boardwick Charitable Foundation, we've got Hudson River Bank. We just have to make sure we've got a process in place for getting out grant requests so we actually get the revenues in. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is something that we need to decide at this meeting as to how that's gonna be handled or which committee at least that falls within. Yeah, and Judy, just one quick thing to add to that. Um, the only ones that are physical requests where we're going out to ask for money are Julie's arts and culture piece and the ELIC piece. Um, the rest are not annual requests for funds okay. um, unless we are going, um, going out for uh, bullet aid. Um, that is a physical request, although that's not included in our 2022 budget. So that's something else we can can try to tra tackle and go after. But the ones where somebody physically has to to write a grant request um, fall into to arts and culture and ELIC, the Hudson okay, River, good. the Evelyn Boardwick. Um, those ones are are sort of standing incoming funds without a without an ask, if you will. So, Judy, are you speaking about uh, ask? and ask for other places that we might be able to get funds with from? It's a combination. One, I think Christy answered the question, there's some which are appear regularly. And I think we had in our small group conversation, a question of, can we ask for more? More, yeah. You know, it's, I think maybe not Evelyn Boardwick, but possibly Hudson River. Yeah, should right. we be talking to Hudson River about the amount we get? Mm -hmm. um, so even if that's not a formal process, uh -huh. it has to be undertaken. Um, Okay, with that, can we move on at this point? 
Um, does it sound like to complete Judy's question or request to go yeah. back to the finance committee? That's where I would start, yeah. Okay, then we just have to make it a responsibility of the finance committee. Yeah, right, right. To be seeking additional funding where, you know, outside of the already logical suspects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you, Judy, for raising that. Uh, where is the, where's Dale? Oh, where do you, oh yeah. Hi. Can you speak <laughs> to the fundraising committee? A few quick fundraising updates. Uh, the resale is over, yay. Thank you all for your support. Um, we sold everything, which is great. So that was fantastic. So after a little shipping delay, um, we got them all out the door and that is over. So that's great. Um, the appeal letter is going up very soon as well. Kim, do you want to speak in more detail to that? Or we don't, do we have an official ETA on when it's? I, um, I, pick, I picked them up yesterday. Okay. Today, I sorted, packed and counted them. They need labels and paperwork, and I need a couple more flats. And so I expect they'll go to the post office for mailing on Friday. Great, that's great. We had a little printer hiccup with getting them out. We wanted them a little bit earlier, but we're getting them, so it's good. We're, we're sooner than we were last year, so that's improvement. <laughs> um, Randy, do you wanna do a quick update on the T fundraiser? Sure. Um I'm looking at trying to do a tea tasting around um, Valentine's Day. And uh, my neighbor who is a co-owner of um, In Pursuit of Teas uh, offered to do this. And we're gonna try to um, have some chocolate samples that would pair nicely with the teas we're selecting. I need to find a good place to get some good chocolate. So okay. that's in the works. Great, Thank We you. would disperse those, we would not be meeting in person, they'd be done by Zoom. Um, Randy, yep. uh, I'm wondering maybe Vertigree in Hudson, which is also a tea shop, but she also has chocolates. She might be willing to donate if, if they, you advertise that it's from her. I don't know, but I okay. know Kim Bach personally. So if you want Great. that connection. I'll talk to you after this then about that. Thank you. How about Vaslow's in Hudson? Yes, uh, somebody mentioned those that place too, and another place in Lenox. So thank you guys; those are good points. And then there's Uncle Sam's chocolates too. If you want to dare go into Prenzler County. Uh -huh. Okay. Anything else? That's it for Okay. Uh, going on to marketing, I have uh, a couple of things. First of all, the, the new website is not launched yet, but I know that I always say very soon, very soon. And um, I think people will really, really like it. It's very good. It's beautiful. Um, one thing I want to say about the process of the development of that. Susan Trevelyan, when she started out, she wanted one person to talk to uh, and relate to, a point person, for the development of the website. I was the point person right now. I think I was crazy to suggest that, but uh, I served as a point person from June to now. When the website is launched, I back off and Vicki becomes the point person. She's going to work with Suzanne to take whatever we want and get it onto the website. So that means uh, ELIC committees, arts and culture, fundraising, things that you want on the website, you get to Vicki, the content. Now here's an important piece. She doesn't write anything. She should not be editing anything. You write your own stuff, edit it, make sure it's on the money, and then you just pass it on to her and she passes it on to Suzanne. So she doesn't get caught up reading people's stuff and editing it and taking all of her time to do that. Do the work when you're, when you're, when you're getting your content together, make sure it's okay. Um, and then pass it on to Vicki. We're really trying to keep it as clean as possible. Uh, so what she does is she gets the content to them, to Suzanne, and then they talk about, well, where should we put it? How can it be highlighted? All those sorts of things. Uh, that's what she'll be doing. The other piece that I th I'm really kind of excited about is we have a blog on their new website. 
Um, and right now on the blog, we have the wreaths that were sold. We have a picture of the quilts from the North Chatham uh, quilt day. Uh, we have, uh, we had 90 hats connected for hat, collected for hats giving. So there's pictures on that. So the blog works this way. Anybody can put anything on the blog. Say, you know, you found out, I'm going to make these up. You, you found out the fire company was going to, uh, they had a whole thing where they painted the toenails of gorillas and you got a picture and you went there. So you want to put that on the blog, which is a community blog and a library blog. So you have to have a title of that event, you know, gorilla in town. You have to write two or three sentences only, no long thing, write those, get your picture and say whether you want it is library news, community news, whatever, and get that to Vicki. So you need all four things. You need a title, picture, a blurb, and what category you want it in. And once again, it's not her job. So it's not like you can call Vicki up and say, hey, you know, they're painting gorilla toenails next week. You ought to write something about that. No, you write it. And this leaves things open to put all kinds of things about our community up. Like I would like to put up something about the luminaries or a picture of the people picking up uh, their luminaries. You know, so it's not just the library, it's the community at large. And if you read a book, um, you could put, a, put in the blog, the picture of the book, you could say something about the book. Um, you know, it's really anything, um, you know, you can put on the blog. You just have to get it together and organize and then get it to Vicki and she puts it up on the blog. So is that clear? That's the process. I think it's going to be a little, I, we've, we're trying to do something every week. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, and uh, so that's good. Uh, I think there, I'm just going to tell you from the marketing committee at this point. So <laughs> look for the website to be launched. We'll let you all know. Um, get, if you're going to put stuff in there, make sure you have it well written and edited. Don't put that the pressure on Vicki to take care of it, any of that. Um, so that's that. Uh, and I think that's all I'm going to report on the marketing committee. So, so I hope Vicky, you all like the website. Sorry, Dottie, I do have a question. Um, the marketing committee will still, I guess, meet. I imagine that over time, we might decide that there are other features of the website that we might want to alter or add or... I don't know. Do something. Yeah, we set it up that, you know, uh, Linda and I have been working on this also, that we would be a backup for Vicki uh, and meet with her, you know, every six weeks or so, or maybe less, and just see what her thoughts are. And also, when we meet in the marketing committee, say, okay, what's what do we want on the website? And as long as we don't want some huge, huge change, which will cost us a lot of money, uh, it's, it's probably generally pretty easy. Okay. Yeah, right. but I see it as, you know, Vicki does, she gets things on there. Linda and I are backup for her. She didn't have any backup with Isaac. Uh, and the marketing committee discusses and takes a look at the website and comes up with ideas and might put more on it. So, so it's not just all loaded on her decisions. Okay. While we still have you, let me just ask you this other question. What is, how is the fee structure with Suzanne going to work? Um, we're... Mm. Okay, we've got, we paid up front, we will have paid 6000 to get the thing developed. Um, we decided not to do the email through them, so that's, we don't pay for that. Uh, Suzanne's fee is $95 an hour. So if Vicki talks to her for five hours a month, that's a lot. But I suspect Vicki will just send in stuff on the email and it will not, we, you know, we got to find out how it goes. We'll, we'll learn, but we're trying to keep it under a couple of hundred a month if we can, but you just, you, we don't know. We don't know. Um, it might take just a little while in the beginning to kind of get, you know, uh, Vicki to get used to how Suzanne wants it. Suzanne gets used to how we are. Um, and so that becomes more of a, eventually a fairly well-oiled machine. And I think any costs would be, uh, you know, go down then probably as that goes on. Does that answer your question? Okay. Donnie, All right. 
So yeah. I have a question as well. Is the blog open to the public? Is it just for, for us to insert? No, it's open to the public, but you have to go through Vicky. So in other words, if somebody in the public, uh, you know, sees something going on, they take a picture of it, it's about the community, we put it through, you know, get it all organized and give it to Vicky. So you need a title, photo, three sentence blurb, and what category it's in on them. Okay, so yes, yes, that's the idea, to so really open it up. And then, you know, if something comes along that's really bizarre, I'm sure Vicki wouldn't put it up. That, that's what I was gonna ask, if there's some kind of filter, or some kind of, uh, you know, um, check. Yeah, yeah. Nothing that gets on is inaccurate or, uh -huh. you know, you're you're really relying on the people who write it up to be accurate. Well, I mean truthful. Let me let me go. But Vicky won't post it if it's right. Yeah. Okay, so she, or... she has that authority then to say no. That's not going to go. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. A curated okay. blog. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's good. <laughs> I think it'll be fun. I see foxes. Yeah, that's <laughs> pictures of foxes. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay, I need mean, go moving on. Um, Mark, do you have a buildings and grounds report? I would just say that um, we have not received the energy assessment report back. He asked me for some continuing data, which I did and got that info back to him. And we're still waiting for that report. I assume it'll be coming. <coughs> okay, anything else? That is it. Okay, thank you. Um, arts and culture, Julie, where are you here? Okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to give a short report this time, but I have been busy um, with uh, applications. So I just submitted another grant proposal to the Arts Council on Friday, and I'm in the process of finishing the final report for the programs this, this year. I want to encourage everyone who knows any children to get them to register for Sunday's program because we don't have very many at all who are registered and it will be a special holiday program and Terry is really fun for children. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of information on the library website about that. Um, but when I was doing the, pro the final report, one thing I found of interest that I think you would like to hear we did seven programs this year. I mean, the seventh is about to happen on Sunday. But anyway, in the seven programs we did this year so far, with six, uh, we had 235 um, attendees. That was a combination of 112 people who actually signed up and were part of the programs. But I want you to know that the YouTube programs that were recorded have been successful. Um, just from the programs that we did this year, not counting going back, um, and we just had four that were recorded, we've had 112 views this year of the YouTube program. So, um, so when we do something on, on, you, on Zoom, if we can record it, that you know, brings in more of an audience. So, and, yeah, and on the new website under Arts and Culture, there'll be a button you can press if you want to see YouTube of, of arts and culture programs. Which is great, which is really great. So anyway, thank you for that. And we have eight programs uh, that we're hoping to host next year. So that's my report for the moment. Thank you. Okay, Elix subcommittee. This Terry is your last time we'll see your little face and hear <laughs> your report. Well, thank you for that compliment of saying it's a little face. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, uh, I sent my report to uh, Randy earlier, but I'm just gonna refer to it as I present tonight. Um, our uh, balance and strength training programs in November were really great. Joe Thorne is an excellent instructor, um, invigorating and lots of fun. And we had a total of, uh, I think, uh, seven folks the first session and 10 the second. Getting a good night's sleep just happened on Monday, and 
really exciting. We had over 23 people sign up because I remember Diana was saying that she had more people sign up over the weekend. And the last time I heard of a number was 23 as of fr last Friday night. So we did have 16 people sit in on Seth Davis's presentation and he was very, very good. Um, delightful, uh, very informative, very positive. Um, we got some really good feedback from his, his presentation. Um, our next program coming up is Buying and Selling on the Internet, and that's January 12th at 10 a.m. It's going to be a Zoom. And then I would just say that um, we did purchase some display ads in November at the Courier, and, uh, or excuse me, the, Colum the Columbia paper. Oh, my goodness. Um, and then um, Register Star for our December sleep program. And someone just mentioned about the hats giving, uh, the hats, and 90 hats were collected at the library for the local hats giving charity. Um, and this was uh, an effort, you know, we have um, ELIC member Leona Scarponato to thank because of the of her how to knit a hat on a loom program. She was really promoting that charity. So um, that was really the, in fact, it was the father of the young boy that, established this charity in 2013. Uh, they're based in the Albany area that came down to the library to get the hats and he was just real impressed by the number. Um, I know everyone's concerned about 2022 for ELIC and I'm happy to say that our programming for February, March and April is coming together nicely. Also we added a new member on the committee, um, Frida Pierce, who is a um, master gardener volunteer cooperative extension, and she's going to do the May program, um, native plants and beneficial, beneficial insects. As you may recall, our theme for next year is how to be more eco-friendly. And so that's the theme that's woven through all of our presentations. Um, and during our uh, EVIC meeting last month, we did talk about developing a member recruitment campaign. And I talked to Julie briefly about that. Um, we never really reconnected again, Julie, sorry about that. Um, but in talking to Dottie, um, we were able to get um, under the volunteer opportunity uh, on the newly designed website. Um, we, we got both the arts and culture and the ELIC programs listed as other ways people can volunteer at the library. And I'm sure that's an evolving process. Um, and I will just say, as, as far as the concerns over the future of ELIC going forward for next year, um, there is meeting held uh, hopefully next week sometime. Um, Rick, I know Carol is involved in um, because it's very, you know, she is making herself available to do some of the, not all of the grant writing, but some of the grant writing for the three grants that we usually apply for. Um, she's going to be working through those details with Rick, and I'm not sure if anyone else on the board is going to be involved in that meeting. Um, but um, hopefully there'll be a process put in place as to, you know, I'm very hard to make sure everybody's got their programs lined up February through May. Uh, we have some firm dates we and firm speakers. We just need to some of the details and that will all be turned over. I did tell Roy Dennison, who's doing the January program that I would help through January 12th. This is my last board meeting, uh, you know, supposedly. Um, but I do want to say that I've enjoyed working with the board and the library staff and all the members of the ELA committee. They've been very um, welcoming and terrific to work with. And I wish you all the best. And, um, and that's, that's my report for tonight. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Terry. For, for, for hanging great. in as long as you did. Appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, moving right along to um, long range plan. Um, Judy and Kathleen and Julie and I met and took a look at the strategic plan, uh, then had some questions and then Julie and I took went off and wrote something and we're going to get together and write, do some more writing uh, and then come back together. I think that one of the things that will probably happen is uh, we'll probably need to do some surveying of the community in terms of, you know, what they want, why they don't come to the library, various sorts of things. We have to iron that all out. However, it's a very good timing that we're working on that plan 
because we're also going to be doing the 414. And we want to have ourselves out there, our materials out there, so that people know the library, help to make the library a presence, uh, you know, door to door, uh, possibly. So, um, so Julie and I are going to work on that and we'll get back to uh, meeting again uh, with uh, Judy and Kathleen. So we're working on it. Okay, executive committee, I don't know who reports for that. I think Rick normally would. We haven't had, we didn't have any executive committee meetings between the last board meeting and now. So I would say we don't have anything to report. Okay, that was easy. All right, new business. Um, I can speak to the first two. Uh, one of the things that happened when we were talking about the strategic plan is we realized it's going to be a while before the new addition happens and there is a an elevator to take people to the um, lower level and to make us uh, compliant and, and handicapped accessible. So we thought, well, why don't we just um, use some of the space at the church? They have a huge downstairs room. They have plenty of chairs. They have tables. They have a bathroom. They have a kitchen. Um, gee, you know, why don't we explore that? So I talked with um, Wayne Shelton, who spoke with the trustees, and they said, yes, they're interested, but they want to know, you know, how many meetings, what kind of meetings, what's the safety protocol, and, you know, what can we work out financially? Um, so I, I would like someone from the board to work with me on this because um, I don't I don't want to do it by myself. I think we need to ask the people who lead the programs, uh, how do you see using the church uh, space at the church? How often do you think you might? We need to kind of get some details about the possible use of that church uh, with the various programs. So I'm looking for somebody to uh, join me in that exploration. And don't all stand up at once. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't think it has to be a board member. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I just have a question though. You said that it's downstairs. Mm -hmm. So stairs still an issue? Oh no, no, no. It's in the lower level of the church. Yeah, no, there's no stairs whatsoever. Oh. The so and so who used to meet at the library had to walk down a set of stairs and back up. They had to walk oh. upstairs. This over there, everything's all on the same level. They are thrilled. So all right. And then the other question is, does it have Wi-Fi? Uh, I believe so. I believe so. Okay. I believe so. I wanted to double check it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I think we'd have to find out if it has a um, a screen, or I guess you could project something onto a wall mm -hmm. also. But for things like the memoir group, you know, yeah. when you know people who are having trouble getting up and down the stairs, it seems to make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Dottie, I would be willing to work with you on okay. that. Great. On the, the yeah. outreach to the church. All right. If, if it, the board approves, but I think we have to get... We got to get more details. Yep. But I think one of the things was actually the memoir group and the comments raised by the memoir group. And our couple of meetings back, we said, well, they could always meet over at uh, Malden Bridge. Mm -hmm. And there's really no good reason why the North Chatham Library activities should be in Malden Bridge if it's possible to meet in a space which is across the street from the library. Mm -hmm. That was some of the thinking behind it. Right, right, right. Okay, thank you, Julie. Um, yeah. Dottie, it seems Sorry. like most of our programs, um, the ELIC and the Arts and Culture are done by Zoom. So this would be sort of preparations for the when future. we're kind of back to normal yeah. and not. Yeah. Yes. The yeah. only programming that's not done by Zoom is the kids program. And so I, I guess there could be an issue if a child comes in and is not able to go down to the lower level, we might want to make arrangements to do the kids program at the church mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to yeah. be compliant. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it makes sense. And, okay. Um, there's also the knitting group that it meets uh, at least bi-weekly down, downstairs here. Hmm. And then they, they meet by Zoom every other week, uh -huh. and, uh, once yeah. in every other week here. Okay. But, yeah. Uh, Leanne. Yeah, Dottie, 
Sorry, I, I'd be happy to help too with uh, the nuts okay. and bolts of implementing if we get that far. Yeah, okay. Good, thank you. Right now the so-and-sos are there uh, two Monday mornings a month. And what we do is everybody who comes, we each contribute th anywhere between three and $5. And that's what we give to the church. And that's, I think, been a nice thing. And it came from the group. I didn't insist on it. Uh, they wanted to contribute something for the use of the space. So I think we're, you know, we're held in good regard. How many people are in the so-and-so's? So-and-so's could be between nine and 12 when there's a lot of people, when most people are there. Okay, so it's between 30 and 50 bucks. Yeah, so yeah, 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 right, right, right. I just want to say, Dottie, from an environmental perspective, I really like this idea. I kind of like it more than, than uh, you know, a, a big build out, you know, for oh, us, but that's yeah. just my opinion. Yeah. I just feel like trying to use existing space where <clears throat> it already exists mm -hmm. and helping the church if they have a need as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, I like the idea myself. That was exactly, that was exactly Judy Albert's idea was that in terms of energy, if we're thinking green, much better to use a space that already exists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so Julie and Mark and I, we will continue on that. All right. Um, the next piece is the use of volunteers in places other than inside the library. That came up, I was talking to Vicki one day and she had two volunteers that she really couldn't reuse in the library. Now, one of them ended up on arts and culture vis-a-vis -vis Randy's encouragement. The other one, uh, we figured out who she is and you know she can be called. So the idea is not that Vicki calls the volunteer for the library, but what we're, I'm thinking is somebody on the committee for ELIC, uh, arts and culture or fundraising calls somebody up, calls in this case, if, if you've got something they can do and um, ask them to, they want to join you. I mean, I think the uh, ELIC group can use a lot of volunteers. Is there a, a generic form that people can fill out if they want to apply to be a volunteer at the library? Yeah, there is on the website. Okay. Do we have another one otherwise, Vicki? Do we have I mean, I, I don't remember ever filling one out uh -huh. to join the committee. No. But uh, I know that on the website, there's a form to fill out, right, Vicki? Am I remembering yeah. correctly? Yeah. yeah. Just, uh, it, and then that would um, be that we would call somebody with that interest or that they might be working here. If they were going to volunteer here, then I've got more paperwork and yeah. forms for them to. Right. But if you if, couldn't use them, then the question would be, who do you right. call? It would seem to me you'd either call the ELIC or arts and culture or fundraising and say, I've got a volunteer. Would you give them a call and let them know if you can use them? Yeah. Yeah. I really hate to turn away anybody who wants to help us out. If we can finally, I mean, if we can just find something that they could do to uh, be involved in the library, I think that's great. I think it's great. So, so then, um, just to go forward, just to pass this information along, um, Vicki would be the receiver of that. Right. right. She would pass it on to the subcommittee chairs. Right. And the subcommittee chairs would call okay. that person. Like okay. right now, I've got the name. I've got to get the number. Um, I think it's Jenny Foster is her name. Lives over in Woodward. Um, and um, so she would be somebody for you, you know, you to call if you've got something you, you know, want to ask her to do. Okay. Um, well, now we also know we need a volunteer to help two hours a week at the library. Right? Yeah, take care of Rowan's place, yeah. Thanks. And we always could use volunteers for fundraising. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely, so there's plenty to do. Well, I previous Vicky, yeah, to Vicky, this, go ahead, go ahead. I just wanted to say, well, previous to this, a few years ago, we would have a lot of people sort of coming in and we passed a lot of them on to the Books and Blooms and, uh, you know, they've even this summer there were people that were asking that wanted to do things, and so we pass them on. 
That's all. Okay. Um, the agenda for each meeting and the minutes for each meeting posted. These are, this is a new New York state law that went into effect in November. Uh, Randy, you want to speak to these two, two pieces? Yeah, I think um, actually Vicki was the first to discover this that um, through a new executive order by the governor, Dottie also came across it that we need to post every, I guess, um, public entity. I, I don't know how, what the structure is, but um, you know, all boards in New York State, you know, including the town board, need to have an agenda posted 24 hours before the meeting. We can um, do a generic agenda. I've seen that the town board has been doing ge generic agendas um, for their meetings prior to the actual meeting. But then we need to post minutes within two weeks after the meeting. So I'm going to try to send out draft minutes like I did in November, shortly after tonight's meeting. If you guys could review that and provide corrections or edits, you can definitely use track changes. I, I can't stress enough how much I, I welcome edits. Um, I'm a heavy editor at work, so I don't get, um, you know, it doesn't bother me when I see my, my work edited. But the point is that we, what we would do is we would post a draft set of the minutes, you know, an unapproved. I'll, I'll do a watermark that says draft on the website. And then at, in our January meeting, we would then approve it and we can replace it with the approved minutes. By the way, our board minutes will also be on the, uh, the website. Okay, anything else? Um, um, quick question. It, yeah. Quick question, Randy, where do you post the, where are you supposed to be posting the agenda? I haven't been posted at, posting uh, anything. Um, Vicki did put something up somewhere about the agenda, but I think what Dottie is saying with the new website, we will actually have a formal place. Yeah, there'll be a page things. for board documents is what it'll say. It. Yeah. I know that, can I, is this the point in which I can just say a couple things uh, as a parting board member or concerns of, of, of mine uh, that are just, you know, I talked with Vicki about this and she was not, she wasn't crazy about what I had to say and disagreed, but uh, one of the things that has bothered me, and I think, you know, it's kind of the cost of COVID is you used to go into our library and at the windows, there were two lovely chairs that people would sit in and read a book. And there was an open space and a table in the middle. And, you know, now it, it just, I don't know what we can do. It just feels so closed and, and kind of messy with everything all thrown together. And I said to Vicki, they've got this cloth over the front of her desk. Couldn't something be done that would be neat? Maybe it's me because I'm sort of a neat neat or something. But I just I just long for what we used to have. And I was talking to her. I said, you know, people come in and they have there's no place to sit down. Um, and they do come in for books. Clearly, we have we haven't had people not come in anymore. And what about we could do something with the downstairs to make it into a reading area or make it a nice sitting place or something? I don't know. I just uh, it just bothers me this we just don't look like we used to do we don't look friendly and open yet at the, I know I'm there so I know people are coming to buy books in in the staff uh, you know Cindy and uh, Vicky are interacting with the patrons so the feeling is still there of warmth and involvement uh, it's just aesthetically it's you know for me it's kind of not great um, the other thing is, and I said this to Vicki, and is that I'm, I'm, you know, I kind of wonder if we aren't out of balance by having so many programs and not having things related to books. Uh, we don't have any book groups. We don't have any um, thing outside that that says uh, anything about a book group or uh, come in and see our new books. We have plenty. Uh, or I'm hoping on the website, a blog, somebody will read a book and write about it so that we come, you know, that piece does not seem to, we've got some programs, uh, that involve books. 
you know, we could do, you know, an author being interviewed. I know that, uh, I don't think Vicki wants to do this, but in Kinderhook, that, that librarian does a, a talk about book talks is what she has every week, but that's pretty demanding and, and Kinderhook is pretty well healed uh, with staff time. So, uh, it because it feels to me like we're a little out of balance uh, in leaning more toward programs and the programs are stressful. Thank God, Julie is still on the board. If she leaves, what's gonna to happen to arts and culture? Carol left and we see that we're stressed with how to keep the grants going. So there's a lot of stress to do the programs as we've done them. Uh, Vicki's got the Columbia County Library Association, which we pick. Those are programs there, so we've got those. But I just wonder if we need to make a little shift in um, you know how we you know how we emphasize programs and see ourselves as uh, a library that does mainly programs and kind of look at what can we do in terms of books reading um you know book clubs I, yeah i don't know so i'm just putting that out that that has been on my mind so since i won't have a chance to say it again there 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 it is so. okay that's that uh um, yeah, Dottie, if i could just say one thing you know i think that um the the chain the configuration of the library i guess i viewed it as a temporary thing because of, of separating people for distancing when we're back open for programs we will need to be able to access that back area and not have anything obstructing where the screen would come down so i envision that we will you know when we're a fully functioning library and we don't have to worry about having plastic dividers up and things like that. I envisioned that we would go back to having the desk where it was programming, you know, that that space would be open so programs can still happen upstairs, the screen can come down, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Okay. And I'm wondering um, to pick up on what you just said, Dottie. Would it be difficult as we get new books in, you know, there always there is the catalog of new books in to just post on the website new this month and just, you know, just right. update it once a month. Yeah. So people would know, hey, oh, that's in. I want to read that. Maybe I should go down to the library or, you know, call up yeah. and get it. Yeah. Vicki, that can be done, right? Um, you know, we did rearrange. I I guess I'll just say what we did rearrange last year so that we have now three columns of just new books, actually, you know, nonfiction, biography, and two of fiction. I mean, we spend uh, $15,000 a year on our collection. Mm -hmm. So to keep up with all the new books that are coming in to uh, uh, put them up on the website or something would be a pretty monumental job. But if you just did it every once in a while, because we've got books up there now. I think what well, we did on, right, I guess the new website, I've got six books there that were new ones, uh, yeah. you know, and I we expect to do that at least monthly, be putting um, the new books or interesting books yeah. up on there. So mm -hmm. there, I, there is that. Yeah, I would think that... Um, you know, you could highlight some books, mm -hmm. not all the necessarily yeah. all the books. You could also mention, you know, there are X number of new books this month, but, you know, just highlight a few. And um, for instance, uh, well, this is a minor point, but I donated the book that my cousin wrote mm -hmm. um, and just learned that the New York Public Library uh, rated it among the 50 best books for teens of 2021. Um, so that could, you know, that kind of thing might be of interest to people. Yeah. Um, it is, it's figure, very you know, interesting. If yeah. you send, you know, if you guys at any time, uh, you know, get that kind of information, you could just send it a text or a, a quick email that we yeah. could use. Yeah, I mean, there's a spot on the new that. website. I'm thinking of the homepage where there's December stuff now, Vicki, that that could be highlighted, what Julie's talking about. And she could blog. write something up, yeah, or the, the blog. Too? I mean, you the know, blog. that's a good recommendation. Yeah, the blog. Yeah. The blog. Yeah. yeah. 
you could even have a section where people readers could recommend i just yes. we do have that but uh people don't uh, really use it they didn't use it before and we had it right out in front and people don't want to take the time these days you talk about the thing people were writing in mm -hmm. the, the book yeah yeah well, now, I, I i think it's something you have to revisit occasionally and it's still here it's the number of people that write book reviews for amazon so you know uh, we do have two book clubs that started here um, I'm not going to start a book club. I really don't have that. I mean, I enjoy reading and I try to read as many of the new books that come in that I can. But, you know, if any of you wanted to start another, I think Randy is in one of those book clubs still, but they've all moved out of the library. It wasn't as comfortable here, just sort of what uh, is happening with some of the other things it isn't uh, comfortable enough for them to get up and down or whatever to uh, to be in here certainly having people meet upstairs there are six chairs around here dotty for people to sit and um but to sit and converse inside the library when other people come in or to have it, it really is uh, distracting to the other people that come in so you know, you'd like to push them out into the little library or downstairs if people want to just come in and visit. Well, maybe that's something for the uh, church group to think about. Mm -hmm. And we don't, at the moment, we don't have a book club, so it doesn't make a difference. But, you know, if that would be one other possibility yeah. of yeah. Right. uses for the other space. Right. right. Um, I just think some way of yeah. promoting reading again and yeah. keeping people attuned to what's new at the library in terms of books and periodicals. Okay. Um, because I do think there are a lot of people will look at things first online and then say, hey, I wanna go down and get it or pick it up or whatever, mm -hmm. as opposed to just going in and browse it. Some people are browsers and some people are sort of web mm -hmm. seekers. Yeah. Um, and recognizing the different modalities of how people access the library. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, did you, you know, notice I, for November when we did uh, Native American Month that we we'd done that with several new books? Um, we put them out on the Mailchimp and had the pictures yeah. of them there, yeah. and that generated some interest. I'd like to see the sign out front say, "Come in, check out our new books." <laughs> you know, because we got them. We got them. All right. Well, yeah. One final, oops. Sure, go ahead, go ahead. One final thing about this, about the arts and culture program, the title of our programs for grant purposes and our thinking has actually been literature and the arts. Um, but I haven't stressed that. Uh -huh. You know, that we come up with a yearly theme and we don't even mention it. But if authors have books, you know, like uh, Alex Morris, Mm -hmm. donating her book to the library now and she did her program um so we could make something of that the mm -hmm. the, the literature that goes along with whatever program. Mm -hmm. yeah i think we should have karen halverson speak about her book somehow yeah okay so now and also there so one more daddy and yeah, also sure. connie uh, uh connie Sandy Connors, she's agreed to do a program. Okay. So we're just waiting for COVID to get, you know, uh -huh. all okay. get back together. So that's good possibilities right there. Okay, nominating and government governance. So we nominate and elect president, vice president, and secretary. So president would be Rick, Vice President Dale, Secretary Randy. But do we first have to approve? waivers for individual and officer physicians for more than three years which would be rick and randy and I, maybe dale no, uh, no we'll we'll get nominated you know this oh. is a time if anybody else has another candidate that they want to okay. put forward so um you know you can leave the door open for someone to say that that they nominate a different person for okay. president or vice president or secretary okay if that doesn't take place um I've agreed to run again. Rick has agreed to run, and Dale, I'm assuming you've agreed to run again. Okay. So then somebody would say, um, I'm nominating this slate of candidates, uh, you know, so, you know, the three of us for these positions. Then somebody would second 
that nomination and then the board would let us know what their votes are. Okay, so uh, I'm nominating Rick and Dale and Randy for president, vice president, and secretary for the board. Do I have second. a second? I'll second. second. Okay. Who seconded? And, well, Terry. 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 And call for a vote. All an aye. Raise your hands. Aye. Aye. Oh, aye. aye. Okay. Opposed. Okay. Uh, so nothing's new. We <laughs> got to say president or vice president and secretary. Um, now, Randy, be, what's the way? Because um, I can't, I don't know if Dale has served in his position for more than three years. Have, he has. Yeah. Okay. Rick yeah. and I need a waiver. Okay. Then to continue serving. Okay. How do we do that? So, so um, I, I move that we waive the bylaw provision that would restrict Dale, uh, Rick and Randy from serving another term. Okay, I second. Thank you, Judy. All in favor, say aye. Raise your hands. Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Okay. And then we've got Miss Julie Cabot, who's agreed to do another three-year term. So I nominate Julie Cabot to another three-year term. Thank goodness. Um, and do we have a second for that? I'll second. Uh, all right, let's call for a vote. Do you want to say anything, Julie, on your behalf? <laughs> no, I just, okay. How many people in favor? Raise your hands. Aye. Aye. Aye, okay. And opposed? Okay. Julie, another three years, baby. <laughs> okay. Gulp. <laughs> yeah. And I've got down the next library board meeting is January 12th, at 7 o'clock. So thank you, everyone. Sue Tanner, it's hard to see you. You look like you're in bed over there. <laughs> um, any, anybody want to have any final words or the last word for this annual well, meeting? I really want to thank Terry, Dottie, and Christy for all your service and hard work and you guys are really a great crew. You've done so much. Um, you've tackled some really hard things, big programs, treasurer, that's a, a big job. And I know you're very busy, Christy, with young kids and your job. Terry, you came from outside. It was really great that you, you chipped in and helped carry Carol's legacy. And Dottie, as a... Yeah. It, integral community member and a very long time board member. You know, you, you definitely deserve a rest, but you will be very much missed. And so I really- Very much you. missed. Well, so I'm still good. gonna work on stuff, so <laughs> ask me. So I you got, know where you live, Dottie. You're yeah, not we got the four, I, I told Judy I'd work with her on the 414. I'm working on the strategic plan and by God, we're gonna get that website up and running. I think I'm going to go get drunk after it finally starts. But yes, <laughs> that, to be honest with you, fo folks, that has been both for Vicky and Linda and I tedious and long. A lot of writing, a lot of meeting, a lot of you know. It's just it's it's been quite um, an experience. But we all can't wait to see it. So. Yeah, I think you'll like it. I'm I'm very sure you'll like it. So. Okay, thank you. Right, can I, say I, just, something? I just want I just want to second what Randy said. I, I seriously, Terry and Christy and Dottie, thank mm -hmm. you very much. You're welcome. I just wanted to thank the two other people for coming here tonight too. We don't usually get many visitors, so thank you to Susan Swift, and Susan Smith, <laughs> and uh, Sue Tanner has come. Yeah, before. yeah, that's been nice. Mm -hmm. All the Susans. <laughs> Okay, I call this uh, meeting adjourned, and everybody, that wasn't too bad, 816, not bad, not bad at all. All Happy right. Holidays. Happy holidays, everybody. Yes. Happy yes. holidays. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.